I have a friend. His name is Brian. When he was a young man, he came to understand the difference between the education that he received in his suburban school district and the education that children were receiving in the nearby city. And he wanted passionately to do something about that injustice. He was an artist, so he decided to become an art teacher. So fueled by his idealism, he went to school and studied hard and graduated, and he got his first job working at an elementary school in that nearby city. He was uh, doing the art in a cart thing where he was pushing a cart full of art supplies from room to room and teaching art. He was so excited with his first job to get an, ex an opportunity to express his deeply held belief that art could change the lives of children. And he totally failed. He couldn't connect with the children, and it wasn't long before he dreaded coming into work at all. He had to admit to himself that he just wasn't cut out for teaching. And he walked away from that job, walked away from education, and never went back. His idealism had failed. When Brian was telling me about this last month, his eyes began to well up full of tears. Although these events had happened years ago, he still had heartbreak. He had the heartbreak of failed idealism. When we put ourselves out there, when we, when we decide to walk the talk of our idealism, we make ourselves vulnerable in a very profound way. And when it doesn't work out, it's very confusing. We, we can feel a lot of different things. Someone might say, well, I brought my best to that community and, and they didn't want what I had, so whatever. Or they might say, well, the system is so broken that one person can't make a difference anyway, so why bother? Or, really tragically, they can say, I did my best, and my best wasn't good enough. These are all different faces of the heartbreak of idealism. It's a really deep, profound wound. This kind of wound happens in our jobs. It can happen in nonprofit and government work where there's a, a sense of service. It certainly can happen to young people in the military when they deploy and see the real results of their work. It can happen but it can also happen in our churches, in our neighborhoods, certainly in our families, any place where we try to bring our best self and it doesn't work out. This also happened to me. Like Brian, I too saw education as an important path to social justice. I'm particularly concerned about children with special needs, especially children of color and children in poverty. I worry about how the system treats them. So I was very excited when I had an opportunity to apply to start a charter school that would serve these children. And when I was writing the application, I found a partner, a person I didn't know very well, but who had strengths that were complementary to my strengths. It's a very competitive process, so we were really shocked when our application was accepted, and very thrilled when we began trying to build our charter, our charter school together. But it wasn't too long after we started working together that I came to understand that my partner had very different values than me. For one thing, she wasn't interested in locating the school in an underserved neighborhood. She wanted it near her home in a more suburban part of the city that we were living in. For another thing, she made it clear that she wanted to make a lot of money. She insisted that she be paid almost twice what a person would normally make in her role. So it's no surprise that we pretty quickly ground to a halt. We took our conflict to our board, which we had recruited, and to make a long story short, I was fired. Fired from the school that I had founded. This was a personal and professional humiliation. I had friends on the board who couldn't see how couldn't see anything wrong with how I had been treated. And my sense of betrayal was complete. My idealistic vision didn't just fail. It, it went over a cliff. I'm not over it. I wish I could say, oh, I can fix that and tie it up in a neat bow and make it go away. But really, I don't know how. I think the best I can do right now is acknowledge that this kind of heartbreak happens and resolve to keep showing up regardless. Now, this is a sermon about healing, so I think the important message here is Sometimes healing happens so slowly that you can't see it. Everything is not all bad. 
You know, if you experience the heartbreak of idealism, I hope that you wear it as a badge of honor. Because that means that you took your convictions to the place where they belong, the real world. You put yourself out there, and so what? It didn't work out. That was a real act of courage. And also, maybe you're a little wiser now. Maybe you have new information that will help you out the next time you go walk the talk of your idealism. I know that's not healing exactly, but it is something. A wise friend of mine gave me a wonderful reading by the writer Louise Erdich that gave me some consolation, and I hope you have some consolation from it too. She writes, Life will break you. Nobody can protect you from that, and living alone won't either. For solitude will also break you with its yearning. You have to love. You have to feel. It is the reason you are here on earth. You are here to risk your heart. You are here to be swallowed up. And when it happens that you are broken, or betrayed, or left, or hurt, or death brushes near, let yourself sit by an apple tree and listen to the sound of the apples falling all around you in heaps, wasting their sweetness. Tell yourself you tasted as many as you could. Amen and blessed be.